This is the sixth video in the Problem Solving and Decision Making series for Washburn University. In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating the trade-off table. Throughout this video, we'll be referencing information that's available in the last video and the last set of slides for the consequences table. So you might want to have that, that slide available to you as we work through this. From viewing your consequences table, you may easily find that some alternatives are universally inferior for all of your objectives. The remaining alternatives will likely provide conflicting outcomes. To analyze and rank the alternatives, we'll use a trade-off table. To create a trade-off table, list the objectives in the first column and the alternatives in the top row, just like we did with the consequences table. However, the information we're going to fill in that table is the ranking for each alternative for each objective. So one is means that it's the best option for that objective. And in this case, because we have three alternatives, three would be the worst. So we can create the following trade-off table. In the first column, again, we have all of our objectives. And then we have all of our alternatives in the top row. Warehouse C had the lowest monthly rental cost. Warehouse A had the shortest distance from the main office. And Warehouse B had the shortest minimum lease time. So none of these are universally inferior. Each one is superior in some way to the other ones. Without weighting them, we would choose the one with the lowest sum. And so that would be warehouse B. It would has the overall lowest rank, so it's the preferred choice. However, we may consider some objectives more important than others. In order to document this and have this impact our outcome, we'd want to provide weights for each objective. So in weighting the objectives, the ranking for the warehouses assume that each objective is equally important. However, if some objectives are more important than others, one way to account for the difference is to weight the objectives. For example, if the monthly rent is much more important than the distance to the main office or the length of the lease, we may want to weight the objectives as follows. So low monthly rental cost is the most important, so we give it a rank of 0.6. Short distance from the main office, well, they all have a fairly short distance from the main office, so it's not a big deal. So it's 0.2. And then the short minimum lease time may not be that important to us. So we'd also rank that a 0.2. The weight should sum to one and should reflect the relative importance of each objective compared to the other objectives. Using the weights provided, we will recalculate the trade-off table by multiplying each rank for each objective by the weight of the objective. So now we have 0.6 multiplied what our original rank was. So warehouse C had a rank of 1 for the monthly rental cost. So we multiply that by 0.6 to get 0.6. Warehouse B had a rank of 2. So we multiply that by 0.6 to get 1.2. And warehouse A had a rank of 3. So we multiply that by 0.6 to get 1.8 and so on. So the weight for the distance was 0.2. And you can see here there how we multiplied each of the ranks in the previous table by 0.2 and the same thing for the short minimum lease. So now we sum them up and we get a different outcome. Since warehouse C had a lower rent and we put more weight on that than the other things, it now has the lowest sum and so this would be our preferred choice. Based on the new weighted trade-off table, the best option is warehouse C. Now as you go through this and let's say that you worked through this example in real life and there was something just off with warehouse C and you you just said this is not a good choice. The best thing to do in that case is to go back and figure out what about that warehouse makes it not the best choice and then reconsider your objectives and or your weightings. After completing the trade-off section we complete the PROACT model by writing down our analysis of how we made our decision and what our result is. So for the warehouse decision our analysis might look like this. The objectives for our decision were to keep the monthly rental cost low, to have a short distance to the main office, and to have a short minimum lease time. All of the alternatives were within a reasonable driving distance. However, the drive between the main office and the warehouse does cost the firm mileage and time, so we kept the objective but lowered its weight relative to the monthly rental cost. The objective of a short lease period came from the desire to provide flexibility should we need to expand to a larger warehouse because of rapid growth or abandon the warehouse because of rapid decline. While the possibility of rapid growth or decline exists, 
the likelihood is low enough that we've reduced the weight of this objective relative to the monthly rental cost. Based on the measures of the objectives and the weights, our recommendation is to lease warehouse C.